Hey, welcome back to Midas Letter Live. My guest this segment is Hassan Khan. He's the CEO of TotaQ Financial Corp. Hassan, thanks for coming in today. Thanks so much. Very glad to be here. Let's start with an overview. What does the company do? Um, what we're really there to do is figure out how to use blockchain to actually crack the financial access and prosperity challenge that hmm. exists both for the 3 billion financially underserved folks on the planet um, as well as even on the commercial side. If we think of all these small medium businesses that uh, struggle to grow their markets, uh, get capital, uh, and then grow into true medium-sized companies. Hmm. So uh, alternative banking, banking, digital banking on the blockchain? That's right. And it's actually thinking about what does decentralized finance look like? Um, and really the uh, company is powered by a uh, new blockchain technology called the TOTA protocol. Okay. Uh, is this something is, you guys developed? Uh, it was developed by the uh, TOTA group. It's not based on any of the earlier protocols, and it was really around solving a few things. Uh, the first was, if you're owning any asset, right, whether it's your money, whether it's goods or services or a digital asset, it would be great if you could privately and securely locally own and have that control over that asset. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that would be fantastic is that if you want to do trade or commerce, you'd like to be able to transact frictionlessly, peer-to-peer, -peer, with anybody on Earth who has a uh, mobile device. Mm -hmm. And do that at a cost where that usual friction of, you know, sort of paying for the benefit of transacting uh, goes away. Transaction fee is not existent? Yeah, and a bit of it is, you know, there's a real difference between fees and cost. Uh, we have a lot of solutions out there, um, you know, if we go to India and we look at Adar or, you know, sort of a lot of these other large, large markets where consumers are offered uh, services free of transaction fees. Hmm. Uh, but there's usually a catch. Uh, the catch is we're going to take your data and we'll monetize and sell that elsewhere. Ah. Or um, we're going to actually charge the merchants fees for access now to the consumer market. Hmm. Uh, and the reason they do this is because they have a cost structure in the back. Sure. And regardless, they've got to make money. Um, the difference with what we do is it's the blockchain platform is so efficient, the cost has been collapsed to nearly nothing. Hmm. Uh, and that takes away the business incentive or need to say, I need to somehow make money on just the pure transaction. Okay, so how do you make money? Well, if you own things or want to do trade, there's another set of value-added services further up right. um, where you can get value. So as an example, either we're providing services that de-risk you. Mm -hmm. So if you own money or another asset, uh, we're providing insurance and trade-related services around that that you find value from. Right. Um, or you could need solutions that are giving you uh, capital or liquidity, and we provide that as well. Okay. Uh, and both of those we just do at a better structure and pricing than you can typically find in the market. Mm -hmm. But the transaction side, free. Interesting. So how many clients do you have now? So we are actually doing our first commercial pilot launches in a week and a half. So the very first, you know, mobile only, purely on the blockchain commercial transaction uh, is going to take place the last week of this month uh, in Toronto. Okay. Um, and from there, we actually have partners in about 10 other countries to do scale outs for both large enterprises hmm. in healthcare, pharmaceuticals, the energy sector. Uh, as well as looking at a lot of small, medium merchant channels. Hmm. So it's an exciting time for us as a company. Sure. Everyone's been working really hard and we're all crossing our fingers. Right. And so is this a company that you envision taking public at some point? Um, yeah, I, th I think for a few reasons. The first is there's a very large group of, you know, sort of partners and backers mm -hmm. uh, that have been along with us the entire way in terms of shoveling and uh, there's a little bit there that investors quite rightly expect uh, liquidity. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other part is because, uh, you know, even at the start, we're, we're global in scope. Right. Um, bringing the public equities market uh, into it sooner or later uh, becomes something that you've got to do. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you say you're going to start with uh, some tra a transaction uh, based in Toronto. Who are the, who's the party originator and who's the counterparty? And how, what, what is the nature of the transaction? Yeah, you know, we were, we were thinking hard about the first transaction because we had use cases in terms of pharmaceutical and drug purchases, uh, high-tech applications, uh, petrochemicals. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually we decided, let's pick a transaction that everybody can understand. Right. And that everyone will, you know, so hopefully they get it. Right. Um, and what it's really going to be is a manicure. A manicure. A manicure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, because 
with something like this, mm -hmm. effectively what's going to happen uh, is we've got, um, you know, we've uh, selected one of the first participants. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically what ends up happening is a consumer who uh, comes into the store uh, is then able to, you know, in 30 seconds, uh, download themselves onto the platform. Uh, they end up, um, you know, for being a marketplace participant, uh, they end up with some what I'll call backstop digital currency that we uh, provide as a grant. Hmm. Uh, so that's actually digital currency that has a backing underneath it. So this is, this is basically you spending a little digital to acquire a customer. Correct. Hmm. It's almost functioning like a loyalty point within hmm. a private marketplace. Right. Uh, and that allows us in a lot of countries and in a lot of different sectors to scale out very, very quickly um, because that backstop digital currency fits alongside the regular currency that everyone else is using. Mm -hmm. um, so that consumer is going to walk in and say, great, I would like a uh, manicure. And they get a bit of a discount. They pay for the remainder of that purchase using the digital currency. Mm -hmm. And the manicure shop gets an additional customer and they start growing their business as well. Okay, so let's assume that I am an enthusiastic embracer, early adopter of TotaQ. Uh, does that mean I would take some of my fiat currency, go and buy any of a group of potential cryptos that you accept, which I'm assuming is Bitcoin, Ethereum, maybe Dash, Ripple, and so then I have my wallet and now I can go and participate in any of the services that are offered on your platform? Um, there's a couple of things we're doing that I think take things in a bit of a different direction. Uh, the unfair advantage of our technology is really around efficiency and scale. Right? Uh, and I think we've all seen with you know, the first generations of blockchain that came out, um, you know, there's some challenges in terms of you know, how efficient is it, how much mm -hmm. electricity are we burning, how much cost is there. Mm -hmm. right? uh, with this, because it sits on a completely different uh, technology layer, uh, the first things that we're putting on it as we run through these pilot scale-outs um, is both our own backstop currency and what we'll call real currencies and real assets from the real economy. Uh, and then as we progress over time, um, there are routes where other cryptocurrencies uh, can find ways to get onto this platform because it sits on a layer that kind of sits underneath mm -hmm. uh, all of the other blockchains. But um, I think that's probably a more um, uh, longer term uh, kind of thing that we'll end up seeing. Our real focus right now is the real economy. Hmm. We're about saying, how do we empower consumers and merchants to have more secure, more private ownership right. of their goods and their assets, and how do we use the blockchain to mm -hmm. power more trade in production and transactions of goods and services? Sure. Okay, interesting. So do you have all of your, the development of TotaQ has been so far from your internal group, or do you have investment bankers involved at this point? Uh, you know, in the beginning, it was very much, uh, you know, labor of love and passion from a very large uh, group mm -hmm. um, that both in developing the technology, the business models, how you go to market. Um, and over time, we've been bringing in more and more private investors. Uh, so now we're hitting that stage where uh, the kind of groups that you're talking about uh, mm -hmm. are the ones that are getting involved. Hmm. All right. Well, that's a great introduction, Hassan. We're going to leave it there for now. We'll come back to you in a quarter and see how you're making out. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you very much.